Hello friends, I'm Mike Birmingham and you're welcome to this 21st edition of the Miscellany for 2021. This week we see the swinging 60s, wonder at Nostradamus, see our capital also in the 1960s and also look at a preserved head in a jar, bizarre, and hear some words of wisdom. Our brain teaser asks us this week which travels faster, hot or cold? Some vintage pictures now. These swinging 60s, a great time for music and fashion, and indeed culture in many respects. In the UK, the epicentre was Carnaby Street in London. Lots of fashion shops all grouped together. In fact, it hasn't changed too much from these 1968 shots to this one taken in recent years. Had we anything like it in Ireland? Yes, there were stores dotted all over. One notable one, taken in 1968, was Even Stephen by Moran and Flynn, a groovy store situated in Dublin's Capel Street. More from Dublin in the 60s to come shortly. World of Mystery Michel de Nostradam was a physician, counsellor and astrologer to two French kings. We know him as Nostradamus whose prophecies have tantalised generations since 1555. His complex four-line verses or quatrains are said to foretell momentous events like the Great Fire of London, the rise of the French Republic, World War I, the rise of Hitler and Mussolini, and also the end of the world in 2000 AD. Thankfully, that particular projection did not come true. However, Nostradamus was so good at his quatrains, he gave the exact circumstance of his death, including who would find him and where. It came true. He has been the subject of many documentaries and films, including one which was narrated by Orson Welles in 1981 called The Man Who Saw Tomorrow. What would you do if you thought you knew? the exact day World War III would break out, and who might start it, and where it might be fought, and who might be left when it was over. Where would you go? How would you protect your family? Don't miss the incredible predictions of Nostradamus, the man who saw tomorrow, from Warner Brothers, rated PG. Nostalgia Ireland now. Some events from this week back in time include May 25th, 1993. Dawson Stelfox becomes the first Irishman to conquer Everest. May 26th, 1897, the first publication of Dracula, written by Dublin man Bram Stoker. 1980, Derry Band, The Undertones, reach number one in the UK charts with My Perfect Cousin. May 27th, 1936, Following the Free State's provision for the formation of Aer Lingus as the national airline, Aer Lingus opens routes to Bristol and London, commencing with a flight from Baldonnell to Bristol on the state. 1960, the last barge on the Grand Canal makes its final journey to Limerick with a cargo of Guinness. May 28, 2000, Ireland's National Aquarium is opened in Galway at the Atlantic Aquarium on the Prom in Salt Hill. Built in the shape of a fish, the £6 million building contains direct water links to Galway Bay and has massive tanks on its roof which collect rainwater for use in many of the fish pools. Now in a four-part series, we now remember Dublin in a slideshow of nostalgic pictures. This is the third part, from 1960 to 1969. <laughs> 
Next week, we look back to the 70s and 80s. Question of the week now. What is the most interesting mummy our preserved corpse perhaps ever seen? Now, this is one of a grim nature, so if you are of a sensitive disposition, please look away now. This is the head of Diago Alves. Diogo Alves was a 31-year-old Spanish man who was executed in 1841. He was born in 1810 into a peasant family. He received a head injury at a young age after falling from his house. Now, when Diogo was 19 years old, he was sent off to work in Lisbon, Portugal. He frequently changed jobs and was known to enjoy drinking and gambling. By the time he turned 26, Alves had become a prolific serial killer. From 1836 to 1840, he is known to have murdered at least 70 people. His modus operandi included robbing poor and less fortunate people he came across on the streets. Then he would blindfold them, leading them to the top of high structures, such as an aqueduct, where he would basically push them off to the depths below. And their deaths would appear as suicides. However, quickly, when people testified and the actual evidence grew, it wasn't long before Diogo's murderers caught up with him. Diogo Alves was arrested, tried and sentenced to death for murder. He was officially executed on February 19th, 1841. That's the end of Diogo Alves, right? Not exactly. Due to some early serial killer psychology fascination, the head of Diogo Alves was severed from his deceased body in an attempt to study his brain and perhaps understand what occurred in the mind of Mr. Alves. His head was preserved in a jar where it resides to this very day, 180 years later. It's fascinating to see the face of a man who lived almost 200 years ago. His facial features and youthful appearance remain. You can still clearly see his long red hair, pasty white skin and his icy blue eyes which now eternally stare forward. And now to something of a lighter note. Video, video. A radio comedy series I broadcast back in 1990 was called The Mini Theatre. In this edition, I play a tramp waiting for a doctor. And that doctor is played by Dermot Layden. Presenting another Mini Theatre. In today's exciting episode, we watch the proceedings down at the Longford Health Centre as a tramp walks in. Next, please. Hey, hey come on now. Hold on now. I'll just sit down here beside your doctor if you don't mind. <laughs> What's that smell? No, it's not me. It's not me. You! What are you doing in here? You can't come in here. You filthy, stinking, disgusting, nauseating old tramp. Aye, that's what the other doctor told me, but I, I just wanted to come in and find out a second opinion. Get out. <laughs> You've been listening to another mini theatre. Tune in next time. Same time, same station. Yep, time for a good wash there, I think. Now, a comedian attempts to define just what a wife is. <laughs> You have a father, he becomes a father-in-law. You have a son, he becomes a son-in-law. You have a daughter, she becomes a daughter-in-law. You have a mother, she becomes a mother-in-law. You have a wife, what does she become? She is the law. Uh, like everything in life, I'm sure some will agree and others not so much on that particular definition. And now, our answer to our brain teaser, which travels faster, hot or cold? Did you get it? Well, hot travels faster because you can catch a cold. Bum bum. The final word, quote or affirmation, words of comfort and inspiration. You have to stop thinking you'll be stuck in your situation forever. We feel like our heart will never heal or will never get out of this impossible struggle. But don't confuse a season for a lifetime. Even your trials have an expiration date. You will grow, life will change, things will work out. That from Brittany Moses. Some things from the last several days, I hope you found some of them of interest, as I have, and we'll speak again in a week's time. Until then, look out for one another. Thanks for looking in, and bye for now.
from the home studio of Michael Birmingham.